blue skies. I love them, and I know a lot of other people that do as well. Skies free of death and destruction. You are probably asking who I am and why I left this message. Well, my real name is Confidential, but you may have heard of my call sign, Trigger, a few years ago. Yeah, I'm that Trigger, and I left this message for those who might find it someday, to hear about the truth of the war that raged across my skies and how it changed my life and the lives of others and those around me. The freedom to fly within these skies cost so many lives, so many people that fought hard to end the war that robbed the world of its peace. During that battle, I learned that peace comes at a cost. So I can only hope by leaving behind the truth of what really happened back then you and future generations might learn to choose a more peaceful future. It started here at the International Space Elevator, also known as the Lighthouse, a place that was supposed to help provide energy to support the reconstruction of the world following the destruction caused by the Ulysses asteroid impact. A place devoted to helping the world peacefully recover from a tragedy became the cause of yet another tragic war. But I am not the only one who was drawn into this conflict. During my time in this war, I ran into a young woman who saw something in this deep blue sky. Does the color of the sky mean anything special to you? It does to me. A hell of a lot. When I close my eyes, the sky in my dreams is a deep, dark blue. Pilots have been in my family for four generations. Flying's in my DNA. Even so, my grandpa didn't want me joining the Air Force. He lost faith in the Ocean Air Defense the day my dad died in battle. You know, Abby, I wish you could see what it's like up there. Cruising above the clouds, the dark blue of the stratosphere. Nothing beats being at the controls and seeing it from the cockpit. Look here. Gramps tossed a magazine over to me with an article. Unmanned fighters are no longer a dream, it read. Pilots taking to the skies will soon be a distant memory. I don't see anything good coming from that. Know what? Lying smack dab in the middle of the desert west of here, there's a bunch of planes from the last war. Some of them have been mothballed, but most of them are just rusted piles of junk waiting to be scrapped. Gramps was really good friends with the Super there, so he got to take whatever he wanted, no questions asked. That's how we got the parts to build our own plane. Now, when I say we, I mean me, my grandpa, and his old war buddies. I cut my teeth working with those geezers. They taught me their skills and some dirty jokes. But with their aging eyeballs and whatnot, I ended up having to do most of the work myself. I was at the airstrip doing some flight training when I saw it. A prototype drone. It wasn't much of a plane, more of a trash can with wings. Laugh at it all you want, kid. But technology's always changing. If you don't keep up with it, it'll leave your ass behind. It took six years and eight months to get that engine running. And it took us another year and a half after that to finally get the balance of the airframe just right. I'd gone from being a little girl to, well, still a girl, just older. But now, I was all alone. <sighs> Wherever the souls of my Gramps and his pals are flying, I hope it's peaceful.
Then, finally, I was ready to break the sound barrier. All this plane could do was take off, accelerate, and fly up. I saw Osea's fighters. They were tailing something. A drone. They were going full out chasing that thing. Doing 30 Gs at least. Damn, I've never seen anything move that fast. It had a rose painted on it. The Erusian emblem. But that country's a whole continent away from here. Should have been my best to piece of junk. Should have built a return too. Is everyone here? Settle down. I said settle down. You have all been instrumental in helping to maintain peace in Yuzha as members of the International Union Peacekeeping Force. Until today. Earlier. Our radar site informed us that a group of unidentified aircraft was approaching. Communication systems went down immediately afterwards. We are led to conclude that they have attacked the site. Here's your mission. It's possible that the Yuzhen ceasefire agreement has been broken for the first time in over a decade. As of today, the Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron of the IUPF has been put on high alert. All members who have been ordered to sortie, fly there immediately. Find the unidentified craft, then use your weapons to round them up and force them to land. If the hostiles counterattack, then you will... What the hell was that? There's smoke! We're under attack. Numerous unidentified aircraft confirmed overhead. What? How is that possible? The tank farm to the north has been bombed. Many injured. Scramble, all units, take off and eliminate the unidentified craft attacking the base. This is not a drill! Meet Squadron, aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. Radar sight's still silent. Scramble. Get those birds in the sky. We're sitting ducks. What's happening? Bombers in some. Don't know how many. Let's clear that runway. We don't got all day here. Main squadron, head to runway. Column squadron, take off. Link to Skykeeper. Hurry, main squadron. Trigger your call sign is page two. Verify and read back. Tower, this is Mage 2, pre-flight check. Control surfaces, okay. Engine check, okay. Master arm, off. Weapons reading hot. Avionics check, all systems good. Mage 2, trigger, taking off. Get those fighters in the air, they're still bombing us. Can't have any more casualties. Time to stop the bullshit. 
Mage 2, form up with Mage 1. All aircraft, let's do this. Golem Squadron, it's go time. Roger that. Golem 4, understood. This is the AWACS Skykeeper. Take down all unidentified bombers. They don't have many escorts. They hit our radars hard in the last attack. Expect the worst and stay sharp. We'll go. Trigger, I'm your wingman. You fly with me now. That's what it means to be in an element. You gotta keep an eye out for enemy bombers. Roger, Mage 1. I have a TU-95 at range, moving to engage. So I told them. I had to fill an empty spot, so play along. It's still a leash, though. Mage 1, engage it. Guns, guns, guns. Bomber squad. Enemy bomber confirmed down. Good job, Mage 2. Not bad, Mage 2. Mage 2, targets located, climbing to Angel 6 to engage. Switching to AAMs. Mage 2 to Mage 1. Bombers and escorts sighted. They're way overhead. Cover fuel storage is intact. Just asking for another round. All escorts form up for another attack. Point is 835. Watch out for the support aircraft. Mage 2, Fox 3. Splash, two escort bogeys. Mage two, Fox three. Splash, another enemy bomber. Mage 2, Fox 3. Mage 2, missile launch. Splash bombers and escorts. That's it. It's great when it's simple. Enemy bomber down. Nice going, Mage 2. Not too shabby, Mage 2. But you still got a long way to go, kid. I'll give you some pointers back at base if you can make it in one piece. Skykeeper, this is Mage 2 to Mage 1. Going minutes. to bounce this lone bogey, then handle the bombers. Mage 2, Fox 2, enemy interceptor down. Column, Mage, two new enemy groups. Mage 2, moving to engage bombers. This is HQ, 
Attention all combat groups. Are there any drones? Verify. Drones? Are you kidding me right now? Jesus, this is the kind of shit that really chaps my ass. <sighs> UAVs? I can't tell them apart. Mage 2, Fox 3. Splash another Fire's enemy down. bomber and escort. Mage 2, Fox 3. Enemy bomber splash. Mage 2, Fox 2. Enemy intercepted down. Mage 2 moving to engage bombers. Mage 2, Fox 3. Splash another enemy bomber and escort. Mage 2 here, engaging and entering the furball. Mage 2, Fox 2, missed. Fox 2, bogey down. Mage 2, spite, breaking hard right. Flares. Mage 2, Fox 3. Bombers splash. One remaining. Mage two, keep your focus. Nickel. You got this. Nickel. Fox two. Mage two, Fox two. Target is hit. Guns, guns, guns. Splash, Nickel. enemy fighter. Mage 2, Fox 2. Guns, guns, guns. Splash, enemy fighter. Mage 2, Fox 3. The enemy bomber splashed. Mage 2, Roger. RTB. Going, Mage 2. Flight Commander looks like he's got what it takes. Let's slow down. It's just one sortie. Don't try to be a hero. I want you to make it back in one piece, you hear? Yeah, I gotta side with the boss man on this. Column Squadron, this is HQ. Did you confirm any drones? What's the deal with all the drones? Column 1, return to base and report for debriefing. We are currently assessing the damage to the base. We have confirmed that the aircraft carrier Albatross was sunk. We know the attacking bogies were from Arusia. International Union peacekeeping force bases all over the Yuzhin continent were attacked in the same way. The damage is severe. Many wars are lost by failing to recover from the opening blows. That means successfully retaliating was very important. You may have turned the tides of battle here. You have our thanks.
The battle was over. It was my first time in combat, and I found myself shaking slightly from the adrenaline, and it got worse when I saw the burning deck of the carrier Albatross and the docks. At the time, I couldn't understand how the enemy had penetrated our early warning radar net deep enough to strike the base such a critical blow. We destroyed all of their bombers, and in one mission I'd become an ace, but all I could think about was the lives lost on the ground. When I landed, I saw the list of those killed in action and missing in action, and then I saw the name and remembered the face of a young man who was enlisted on the carrier albatross and others from that same ship that I just paid, played an intense game of poker with the other night. They were all killed when several anti-ship cruise missiles were launched from the attacking bombers and struck the carrier. Anger mixed with my sorrow as I stared into that sky that had been blackened by the clouds of war. As of 1 p.m. today, the Kingdom of Erugia has declared war on the Ocean Federation. As soon as the news broke out, enemy aircraft began bombing Ocean territory, causing widespread destruction. The Air Defense Force has released a statement saying this violent attack was carried out by drones. They speculate the drones were secretly transported to Osea in shipping containers and launched remotely. The Secretary of the Navy has stated that the enemy was targeting naval ports across the country. According to the Secretary, all of the nation's aircraft carriers, including one still under construction, sustained severe damage in the attacks. We have yet to hear back from the Department as to the fate of Osean carriers currently at sea. Hold on. I've just received breaking news. The International Space Elevator, which is being built in southern Yuzha, has been seized by the Erujian Army. Reports say former President Harling was touring the site at the time, but his current whereabouts are unknown. Our sources in government tell us it was Harling's policies regarding the space elevator that caused economic frictions in the area, and which ultimately led to this war. Located near Erujia, on the continent of Yuzha, the space elevator has been under construction for some time now. The Executive Office of the Ocean Federation has declared a national state of emergency. They have ordered all its armed forces, including Yuzhin peacekeepers, to mobilize and make the necessary preparations to launch an immediate counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is officially at war. Stay tuned for further updates. Breaking news from ENN. Osea launched an attack on the capital today, striking Farbanti from their aircraft carrier, the Kestrel II. After a brutal battle, the Erujian Air Force successfully repelled them. During the air raid, the Osean Air Force fired missiles at the city and managed to shoot down a number of Erujian fighters. Some of the disabled planes then crashed into residential areas. There were announcements all over the news about the, how this war had started, and it just flooded my mind like so many dark clouds that billowed out from the dockyards and the destroyed carrier. But little did I know, another person's life was recently changed, and they were seeing the same clouds burying the deep, dark blue sky that they desired to fly in. The world was screwed. 20 years ago, the Earth got slammed by an asteroid. Yuja was on the wrong side of the planet and got hit. Hard. Refugees swarmed the Erujian Republic, the biggest country on the continent, plunging it into chaos. They were desperate and started a war, one they had no hope of winning. That's the war my dad fought and died in. The biggest nations from two continents went head to head, and the so-called Righteous Oceans struck the deal that ended it. They fancied themselves the only nation that could bring peace and stability to the world. They even tried saving the Yuzhans, still suffering from the disaster. That's how a space elevator, stretching way up into the sky, ended up being built in Yuzha, paid for by the Oceans. President Harling said he did it out of compassion for his fellow humans. But to the folks in Erujia, it looked like Osea was moving in to take over. Erujia went from being a republic back to being a kingdom. 
When they started this new war, they managed to get the drop on everyone. The second the declaration hit the news, Erujian forces took control of the space elevator without spilling a single drop of blood. President Harling was touring the elevator when it happened and disappeared. Then, while that was going on, the Erujian ships that were docked all around Osea released a swarm of drone fighters they had hidden on board in containers. No one thought they were capable of doing what they did that day. With pinpoint accuracy, they managed to take out everything that was military, and not a single civilian was hurt in the process. Osea pissed lots of people off with their huge military presence around the world. Erujia didn't have the same reach, but they could hit their targets faster and cleaner. And when all this was going down, I just so happened to be in my flying drag racer. In case you were wondering, yeah, I survived. I crashed in a bombed out Ocean Air Force Base, then got arrested for breaking wartime aviation laws or some crap. The world went from being at peace to being at war, all in the blink of an eye. I was tried, found guilty, and stuffed into a cargo ship. For company, I had some court-martialed soldiers. And remember those mothballed planes I told you about before? They were loaded on the ship, too. We headed off down south for several days, and then swung east. That's how I got here. I was thousands of kilometers from Arusia, on the opposite side of the Yuzian continent. For a port, it was dull as hell. It had three rusty patrol boats. And the base? The fences were topped with razor wire, the tower had a searchlight and machine guns, and a truck with a gun turret was parked in front of the gate. Its gun was aimed at the yard. This was a prison. This place looked like a full-on base, but half the tanker trucks were just big balloons, and the runways weren't even paved, just painted on the dirt. The whole place was just one big, fat lie. The only reason I was here is because they knew I'd restored a supersonic plane. They wanted me to make something out of the mothballed planes they brought, that they could park on the fake runway. Can you believe that shit? So, I tried to escape. <laughs> they found out. <laughs> and set the dogs on me. 